Now, on Chris Kenny tonight, the other night, we talked about Tony Abbott being recruited to the Global Warming Policy Foundation, a London-based think tank that dares to challenge the climate alarmism that's omnipresent these days and the policy madness that's provoked from governments around the world. I spoke with the foundation's director. He is by far the bravest Australian politician of his generation, perhaps, you know, the bravest after John Howard. And he has been very clear and outspoken on the risk of climate policies undermining Australia's security, Australia's energy security. All well and good. But the left, as you know, and as you just saw at the start there with Margaret Court, they want to cancel anyone who doesn't run with the pack. They want institutionalised groupthink, which, of course, is no thinking at all. And because Abbott also has a role as a trade advisor to the British government, there are now have been demands for him to be sacked. Yet yeah, the leftists and the climate activists have demanded that the former Australian Prime Minister be dumped because he's now associated with a think tank they don't like. Not for this mob any sense of pluralism or the contest of ideas. A Greenpeace spokesman, Mel Evans, says talking tough on climate action while filling your board of trade with people like Abbott is a dismal signal to the world about Britain's climate leadership. Greenpeace went on to say Tony Abbott is free to continue his journey into unreality, but the government shouldn't allow us to be dragged along with him. Well, I'll show you some unreality in a moment. But the Liberal, Liberal Democrats' Wiro Hobhouse also had a go saying for the British PM to allow Abbott to continue on the government's board of trade tells you everything you need to know about his prioritisation of the climate crisis. These people are nothing if not fanatical and nothing if not intolerant. But just as an example of how simplistic and unscientific the green left media is too, have a look at a couple of phrases from The Guardian's coverage of this controversy. It says the Global Warming Policy Foundation has produced reviews at odds with mainstream science. Do they not understand science and the scientific method? Do they think science is based on consensus? Climate science isn't sociology. It's not a politics tutorial. Science is only advanced by challenging and testing all theories and propositions. If nobody ever produced any views at odds with mainstream science, would all still believe that the Earth is at the centre of the solar system. And the article also says the Foundation has shared work suggesting that a rise in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere could be a good thing. Well, again, that's the point. That addresses inconvenient facts. Of course there are benefits to high levels of CO2. That's why greenhouses exist. That's why gardeners pump CO2 into them. And we all know, all science recognises there are benefits to global warming. More rain in areas that need it. Less freezing in other parts of the world that then get longer growing seasons. The whole point about assessing the impact of global warming is weighing up the benefits against the drawbacks. And the same needs to be applied to climate change policies, measuring the costs against the benefits. This is the sort of logic the Global Warming Policy Foundation pursues, and it's the kind of intellectual rigour the debate desperately needs. Thank God someone as courageous and intellectually diligent as Abbott has enjoined their battle.